the Knicks fall to the Hawks. JL is 100 yeah, to 96. Man. So many storylines in this one. This one was actually a pretty entertaining game, man. It had a regular season vibe to it. Uh, yeah. Garden was certainly electric. 8 o'clock start, ESPN game as well. Uh, give me your takeaways on, on tonight's loss, man. Uh, the takeaways, well, first and foremost, like the point guard situation seems to still be a question mark uh, for the Knicks right now. Um, it looks like, you know what, Peyton, he didn't play t- tonight. Franny Lakina got significant minutes. Yep. And he seemed to play well on the defensive end of the ball, and he set some guys up as well. Dennis Smith Jr.'s first game back. Um, didn't look too good. Hit a, a late jumper. But that's about it from DSJ. So the, the point card position is still a little iffy. But um, so so far, it seems like RJ might be winning the point guard battle. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, CP. You, you know what? It's funny that you said that, man, because RJ Barrett, of the three guards in the point guard battle, finishes with seven dimes on the night. Uh, I mean, listen, DSJ didn't have it going. We knew he was rusty yeah. coming in. In the yeah. beginning, he looked. it looked like it, he was kind of physically limited, which was kind of concerning to me, but yeah. he picked it up in the fourth quarter. Picked it up in the fourth quarter on both ends. Defensively, he picked it up. Offensively, he knocked down a bucket or two and, and got a little bit more active in the second half, in the fourth quarter in particular. Um, uh, Frank, it was a story to me, man. Frank Nilakina yeah. was a story to me because even though, again, he didn't have it that much going in the un, in the first half, especially on the offensive side, and we'll get to the offense in a second, defensively was where he made his stamp on the game. This is Frank's calling card, man. And needed it. I mean, needed it. Yeah, and listen, you know, the, the reactions all over from the YouTube chats, the Twitter, all over social media – this kid, he, 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 we need his defense, man. Need it. We, just, we, we don't have a choice. We don't. We, we need his defense. So, at the end of the day, we have to be able to develop this kid and, and hope that his offense can come around because you need him to get stops out there, bro. Yeah, like the, the block at the end was very telling. And he's the only guy really who's a Savannah getting around the pick and roll. And he just causes so much havoc. And, he, and he's not going to fail he's not he's going to keep competing and it, and it's like i i love dsj but I, i'm not i'm gonna give dsj some yeah we gotta give him some time let's, let's give him some time game back. we'll give him some time for sure for first sure. game back i don't know what his conditioning is like because he's been out yeah i don't know if that's affected because you know it's been touted that his conditioning is way better yeah but it's that you know it's, it's certain players i'm looking at dsj it's like yo i wish you made that dig there i wish you made that play here and i know frank is gonna make that right um so i mean Frank, he put his stamp on the game. Now, he only had two points. Um, but you know what? When you have guys out there like Randall and, and, and RJ and Portis and Mook, who's going to put up those shots, yeah, you don't really need a guy who's going to just, you know. <laughs> that, that's it, man. Too. That's it. You, you need a, a guy that, that's going to be able to have his impact on the game without scoring. Um, so that was very interesting. You know, with DSJ coming in, Frank, you know, really asserting himself on the defensive end. No Peyton. And RJ leading the team in assists. And, yeah. and and my tweet, my last tweet that I put out before we went live, I said, you know, yeah, we got to give DSJ some time to, to get it together. But if it doesn't work out, is RJ Frank the tandem backcourt that we are really looking at here? It might be. It, like, it, it could make some sense, man. And... If both of those guys start making jump shots, then the league is in trouble because you have RJ who can easily take over the game for you. And those guys are both six seven and be able to kind of handle these bigger guards out there. And you saw how RJ, he just uses his body so well, man. Yeah. I love the way he turns the corner after a little hezzy dribble. He just shows the body very easily and gets to the bucket. Even though he wasn't, you know, scoring, yeah. he just makes plays. Play well. Up. I, I think he, he's looking more and more comfortable out there. You know, obviously his, his shot isn't there. I think he only went like three of eight from the field. Finished with 12 points once again. So he's getting to the line. Uh, he's staying aggressive. 
You know, he, he was going up against his, his Duke boy, Cam Reddish, out there tonight. Yeah, so got that, personal. That, the gig, yeah, got personal. So that was interesting. So, again, it's going to be interesting. This point guard thing is not going away, man. It's going to nope. be um, uh, a storyline for all season long. And you saw extended minutes of RJ at the point guard tonight. That was very interesting to see. And like I said, that RJ Frank tandem could be on the way, man. You just never know. Yeah, you just never know. I mean, yep. Peyton, he's he's played well for the Pelicans. I don't know what's happening with Peyton in, in practice because the coach keeps, you know, pumping him up in practice. But so far in the preseason, it hasn't seemed like he's really taken the reins and, nah. and said, I am the point guard so right. far. He's like... Done some, he's done some stuff that Frank does, organize the offense. Right, right. You know? now, I, he hasn't separated himself, man. So let, let's yeah. let's put that to bed, honestly. No, he hasn't. Let, let's he just hasn't. keep that as a as a uh, you know injury life vest. You know what I mean? Because right now, like mm-hmm. I said, I want to see between the two uh, between the three lottery picks. You no, know, throw RJ in the mix now. At, at, you know, as part of the point guard uh, potential rotation. Um, second storyline was was to me. Uh, was lineups. Uh, we yeah. saw Bobby Portis starting at the five tonight instead of Mitch. Um, mm-hmm. To me, I saw it more of experimentation from Fizz. Wanted to give Randall some more room to operate. I didn't really see it as a you know a long term thing. I saw it more of a, a, as an experiment. Maybe he wanted to uh, you know teach Mitch a little bit of a lesson to try to get his head in the game a little bit. Last game he was kind of out of sorts. Uh, what do you think of Bobby in in the lineup tonight? I mean, he he played all right, though. Like, yeah. Especially that fourth quarter, because you know everybody's thinking, all right, Bobby can spread the floor. What is he going to give you defensively? He didn't have the, the blocks that Mitch had, but the team defense was still pretty on point and was, you know, a big part of that comeback in the fourth quarter. So you got to give uh, Bobby credit and the team credit. Um, that lineup, that ending lineup with, with Frank and RJ, with uh, – Bobby Portis and Marcus Morris and Julius Randle. He, he did pretty well. Yeah, I, I was I was nervous to see how they were going to finish that defensively, but they actually fared fairly well. Um, in mm-hmm. the beginning, in the beginning, the uh, the paint protection left a lot to be desired. We definitely yeah. missed Mitch in the beginning, but I thought defensively down the stretch, uh, they they weren't um, they weren't too bad. They, I mean, they couldn't keep Vince Carter from killing us. I mean, you, you yeah. had you had Vince Vince was out there revving up the motorcycle at sixty, man. <laughs> You know what I mean? He's not even riding the ninja no more, man. He's riding the straight up Harley Davidson, you know, uh, uh, mid midlife crisis motorcycle out there. Vince was trying to (laughs) Vince was trying to have his MSG moment in the preseason, bro. Yeah, man. It was getting getting a little personal between him and Morris. Yeah, he was at Portis too with the plus two. That that, that kind of tells the story too, man. Portis. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> Portis, Portis did finish with 16 and 7, not too bad. 50% from the field. Julius Randle, 20 points, 8 boards, uh, was also fairly solid. And Marcus Morris, 14 points, 8 rebounds, another solid offensive outing. Looks like the offensive production is going to come <laughs> from the front court this year, man. No, I think everybody saw that coming. Looks like it's that's where it's going to come from. Um, coming, yeah. Another mm-hmm. part of the lineup story, once again, let me hear from the ISO Zo fans out there. Yeah. I was talking on Twitter and I said, um, you know, a lot of these rotations and lineup changes are experimentational. You know, a lot of experimenting. But mm-hmm. a lot of this stuff, a lot of these ro- uh, guys getting in there like Ellington, I think this is this is a sign going forward. I mean, obviously things can change. But you're now right. seeing three straight games where Wayne Ellington is getting a bulk of the minutes. And yeah. and tonight was no different. I mean, he, he finished with uh, 15 minutes tonight, zero minutes for Isozo. And especially when the offense was bogging down and we had absolutely no answers, no scoring. Uh, I think we went like seven for 30 from downtown. Once again, three points is killing us, which is Wayne Allison's yeah. calling card. No Isozo jail. Speak on it, man. What are you, what are you, what are you thinking here? What's going on? Uh, I agree with you where, you know, First game, I wasn't too concerned. You know, two, three games when is that when that's happening, it's a pattern. Now, when it becomes a pattern, you start thinking, okay, this might be like a train of thought for the coach. The coach really thinks we really need that three point shooting. He might think Wayne Ellington can give you that. But um, the thing with Wayne is, if he's not shooting the three, then what? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> like right. Left with, then what? And I think that's the problem with him in general. And now it's a problem with him in Miami as well. 
Now, he had a pretty good year with Miami from the three-point line, but like, I think I said this is the first program that his defense was was left, wasn't, you know, wasn't up to, to par, and he ended up losing it eventually after he was injured. Yeah. And we have other twos here who might be better defensively, who might be, uh, you know, more versatile, who can, you know, contribute to the game if they're not shooting. Right. Right. And I mean, I've almost already factored Dotson out of the. I told you, man, I, I didn't think I mean, Dot, he, he was just coming back off the shoulder. I didn't think he was going to play much uh, anyway um, in this game. But um, with like I said, with Ellington, his presence now, things are getting cloudy, man. And we haven't seen ISO at all. I mean, he, he he's out there at the end of the bench with Iggy and him. Like, come on, man. Yeah, man. I'm kind of nervous about Dotson, too. But I said it before, like. I feel like Dotson could be an Ellison uh, um, Wayne with with defense. With defense, you know? with with better defense. With this, exactly. So I, I think he's a slightly more slightly more versatile than uh, Wayne, and ISO definitely is a little bit more versatile than Wayne. If, yeah. If, you can, if, the, if the three is shut down for ISO, he can get you, get you. Um, you know, you can go to the, the mid range and hit some there. So. Agreed. Hopefully, the coach wakes up. But you yeah. know what? It's still preseason. It's I'm pre-season. still not going to sound the alarm yeah. just yet. Yeah. But that's something to keep your eye on for sure. That's all, man. We're just keeping our eye on everything. Just just silent observers. <laughs> yeah. Silent, yeah. silent observers. Salute to everybody in the chat once again on this late night post game show. Um, I see a lot of comments coming in. Free ISO. I know we're going to hear from Ari in a little bit. We're going to get to the calls in a little bit. Um, my third takeaway, J. Ellis, I think. You know, listen, man, I, I hate questioning the coach. I hate questioning the coach during preseason, but it was just a lot of head scratches, man, offensively and even defensively at times in this game. I mean, from the offensive end, um, when things started to bog down and, and you have guys like a, a Julius out there, a Portis out there that can excel in the pick and roll, and you're not really running pick and roll, it's just a lot of isolation play out there. I thought we were very lost on the offensive side, you know, partially ineffectiveness by the guards, but also I didn't really see much adjustments going on. Yeah, it's concerning. It's definitely concerning. He, he touted that he was going to run some, you know, some more complex offensive systems. I'm praying that he's going to implement more sets moving forward and it's just, you know, third game season thing. But uh, I just hope, I just want to see some progression. Yeah. And I'm not sure if I've seen progression yet. Uh, I'm, I'm a little concerned like everyone else is. I'm still not going to go all full speed ahead with it. Right. But – I mean, it's still early, still preseason, and it's still a new team. I'm all, I'm yeah. putting, I'm giving all of that, but uh, you know, still concerning. Still concerning. Yeah. And then, and then on the defensive end, they waited until six minutes into the fourth quarter before they decided they decided to trap Trey Young from and stop him <laughs> from embarrassing him all night. I yeah. mean, you know, you waited until six minutes until the fourth to make your, your your adjustment, and surely enough, that's when things turned around and they got back into the game. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's like, okay, I mean, I would like to see that, you know, that I would like to see that call happen a little bit sooner. You know I, mean, I mean, nobody on the Hawks was going to kill you, maybe except Vince Carter, but yeah, nobody on the Hawks was going to kill you from the three-point strike. I would have taken a risk of leaving yeah. a wide-open Vince Carter than letting Trey Young do his Steph Curry impersonations out there and go off. Uh, that's a fact. You saw what happened when um, we actually started to trap him. Like, oh, look look at that. We started to get stops. <laughs> we, we started, started to get, get stops. <laughs> and no one else could do anything. <laughs> yeah. uh, so no one else has any No one else has any real ISO capabilities after Trey Young has stopped to pick a roll. So, hey, let's let's try that earlier. <laughs> it, yeah, it was just a head scratch. That's that's a, just 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 an observation, GL. You know yeah, what I mean? Okay. Just a preseason observation. Preseason man. observation. Yeah. Absolutely, man. But yeah, those, those are my, my solid takeaways from the game. Salute to everybody in the chat once again. Uh, if you're new in the chat, leave us a hashtag new. I saw a couple of uh, subscribers coming in, so salute to all the new subscribers. Uh, Daryl Kane sent us a super chat. He says, um, watch TYIs when DSJ had to leave. Frankie said... Oh, I I'm not really sure <laughs> sure what the comment was, but I get I, I what he's making out is that he, he liked Frank's minutes out there. So, um, salute to Daryl for the super chat, and um, let's go to the phones, Dale. Let's save for some fans tonight. We're gonna go to the Bronx first. Let's go to Roquan from the Bronx, and he wants to give his take on the game. Roquan, how you feeling, bro? Yeah, 